Well, hello again and welcome to our live Thursday show. I am Greg McQuay with a great friend of the show right here. We jump right into Big the kitchen Herm. with our great friend of the show, Richmond Cater at Big Herm Baskerville. And today, he's going to help create a beautiful dish that's going to make it smell like maybe the Bordeaux region or maybe... New Orleans. Or Big Herm's Kitchen. Ah, yeah, Big Herm's Kitchen, that's right. You do it. What are we going to be making here today, my man? Um, we're going to do uh, basically a, a, light, um, a light fettuccine with a light sauce. And we're you, gonna, had me, you had me right at fettuccine. fettuccine. All right, then we're going to throw in some, some um, fried oysters. Ooh, uh, yeah. And then we're going to fry them just a little bit differently than we normally fry them. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so that's, that's pretty much it. Let's do it, man. Where um, do we start? Right here, what we have here is, is leftover, about a cup of leftover water from the pasta. Typically, just discard it. Yeah. But we're going to use that to make our sauce. I like it. Recycling. Well, going recycling. Going, going green go. at Big Herbs, green. baby. Uh, well, let me go ahead and get the oysters start cooking first. Yeah. Basically, we have some select oysters here. Um, we buy them about a gallon at the kitchen. Do you? Um, select, um, you get about 70 to 100 per gallon. Um, we buy them about a gallon size. They are, you know, fairly expensive, um, mm -hmm. meaning like about a gallon of oysters is like $88, $90 right now. Whoa. Now, these are a little small. Depends on the season. Sometimes in the, in the summertime, yeah. when, they, when they're more plentiful, they're a lot bigger. I'm going to pick a few of them up and show you how we do it. How uh, easy is it to cook with these bad oh, boys? Uh, super easy. Is it super it's, easy? It's, it's even faster than cooking shrimp. So, and some like, people, when you say oyster, they kind of cringe, but, man, they are so they, good, They are they? good. They yeah. are good. Um, so here, all we're going to do here is we have straight all-purpose flour. Straight all-purpose flour. Some milk. A little milk. Some eggs. Three eggs. And this is what we're, we're creating the base, Big Herb? Yes, creating okay. the base. Just going to mix that up. Love it. And then here we just have some seasoned breadcrumbs. And you can get these at, uh, at a at, store anywhere? At anywhere, at Kroger, um, anywhere. Um, seasoned breadcrumbs. Okay. Or you can get you know plain breadcrumbs if you wanted to. Or if you have some leftover bread, you can make your own. Oh, I know the, the oysters come in so many variations, Big Herm. Uh, they're, they're, they're very salty, so they yes. have a lot of flavor to begin with. Exactly. So what, what kind of are, are these? These, um, they, once again, typically when you get the oysters, they are in a salt, like a, almost a salt brine. Like already. a brine. So exactly. So here you notice, besides the seasoned breadcrumbs, we're really not going to add too much more salt. Just because they are super need salty. It. You don't need it. And once again, the flour help cut some of that salt as well. Okay. Um, so we have a fryer that's going over. You know, my little fryer. We always bring the little fryer here. You never go, you never go anywhere without fryer, it, man. Yeah. Exactly. So here we're just going to throw some oysters in the, in the flour. Okay. As you said, these are the, the smaller ones? Yeah, they, they're, normally, they're normally a little bit bigger yeah. um, in the summertime. But once again, a lot of times it depends on what the, what the um, fishermen can catch or what have you or the oyster people can catch. Um, typically when you bread, whether it's um, fish, shrimp, or oysters, you try not to let them touch each other if you can help it. Oh, well, why is that? They don't want um, them to clump they, together? They don't want them to clump together. And you want to make sure you get a nice breader. Breader. Bre 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 all over it. And then that way it goes right in like that. Just so you don't have any sort of naked oyster. Correct. Right? You want, Correct. want them fully covered. And then you want to fully cover it there. Okay. Then all we're going to do is drop it in our mixture here, which is, once again, all it is is a couple of eggs with three eggs and a little bit of milk. And typically you want to say keep them separate as well. As, as much as possible, okay. yeah. And then once again, when we go into the breadcrumbs, it's going to be the critical part of keeping it mm -hmm. very separate. You like to do this? Shortly before you throw them into the fryer? Yes. You know, this is one of the things you don't want to leave it in, in the um, oil, excuse me, in the egg and milk mixture too and, long. And you don't want it necessarily want to marinating of, or anything exactly, like that. Exactly. A lot of flour would come off. Mm -hmm. Big Herm, what is it like cooking with uh, a lot of seafood? Because there's so many. There's catfish down there. There's right. oysters on the, you know, the menu as well. What do you like about cooking with seafood? Um, seafood, I like it because once again, and we've done a lot of it here on the show. Oh yeah. Um, but we like it because we, we do it to our, we do it to order, and we you know lightly bread it. Um, we're not one of those ones that want to get a baby shrimp or baby oyster or what have you. We lost the oyster, or they would take care of that later. Um, but we like it is to, raw. Do you like it, to, do you like to go raw on uh, the oysters? Yeah, I, 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 personally eating them. Um, no sir. No, that's not my you, thing. You can do it though. You right? can do it. Um, then you can't. You're not supposed to do the ones out of a bucket. Oh, um, you're not? You're not supposed to do those. You're supposed to do I was, I was just going to grab that. Yeah, Why is that? Don't grab that. Um, I'm not sure, but it's like one of those, like, you know, all, all, all um, tuna or all salmon is not sushi grade. Uh, um, okay. But it's one of those things where I think it's more like one of those um, things where you just. Don't I will take do the it. expert opinion okay. to not do it. Okay. Now, this is some, what is um, this, this right this here? This is the butter that we made out of garlic, um, obviously butter, cream. And then this is going to break down to make the sauce with the other water we had oh left over. Oh, my goodness. I mean, I thought, the, I thought the oyster was going to be flavorful enough. Right. And all the all this will be online this afternoon. Um, we have a oh, separate. Of course. Um, and once again, this is really nice, too, because we made it last night. You can chop it up. We can? Okay. Help speed up the process. Oh, we wow. made it last night. And then once again, it just makes it super easy. So you had some garlic in here. What else? Garlic, some thyme, some, um, what else? Mm. Some cumin. 
and we also had some red pepper flakes. Now, normally, uh, the oyster bolognese has uh, a little bit more of a Bordeaux wine or anything, but this is more garlic based. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. No wine was 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 used in this um, presentation. Okay. And wow, here, this is all really all thick, all man. Too, these. right? Yep, this is fantastic. Red these here. Mm -hmm. And once again, here one of these fryers. Low heat on this butter, man. Um, yeah. Or do you want to um, bring this to a sort of a um, boil. Sort of to a boil. Yeah. Okay. Once it starts boiling, we're going to add in our uh, fettuccine. Oh. And once again, obviously, you can use any kind of pasta that you want to. Right. Uh, we found that fettuccine works the best. And same thing here. We're just coating that real good, so you shouldn't see any, any wet spots on there. Is it okay to cook the uh, the boil the pasta prior to this? Oh yes. Oh, yeah. yes. Right. You so want to do that once again in, in that recipe. You are actually using the, some of that juice or some of that water left over from the pasta. Going green at Big Herms. We don't do that often, mm -hmm. but today we are. How many oysters are going to be in this dish? Um, we have, uh, um, for a party of four, we did roughly 25 to 30. Ooh. So, you know, hopefully a party of four, you that divides yeah. out to be like five or six. Sure. Depending on the size. Not to mention the pasta's going to fill you up, too. Exactly. So you're working that. Yeah, man. It's coming melting quite nicely here. The oh, you can smell the garlic, man. Oh. This is just, oh, wow. And then the oysters, oysters once again, oysters don't take long at all. No. Minute, probably a minute and a half, two minutes. And the, the, I read where this had a, a bone marrow as well as wine. No bone marrow used no, for this no, as well, Not in right? this one, no sir. Yeah. So this is vegetarian? I mean, or pescatarian. Pescatarian at this yeah. point, and obviously vegetarian, I guess if you didn't, um, not vegan, but vegetarian if you didn't yeah. have the oysters. Oh, man. We've got about a minute here, Big Herm. All right, let's throw oh, this. Oh, this is boiling right here. I yeah. would just put a straw in this well, let's throw that skillet right here, man. This smells so good. That's so coming to a boil, too, man. Fettuccine, right fettuccine in there, my right man. In there. Okay. Let me get you another pair of tongs. Yeah, you can mix it man. Up with that. Thank you. Notice we have uh, this right here. Wanna, like you said, with the oysters, you want to get this sauce all over yes. the pasta, right? All over the pasta. Mm hmm. So, if you have a little prep work, but this is, you know, you could really do this in no time. No time. Ten minutes or exactly. so, if that. I cook a little, little time on the, uh, on the pasta. Oh, man, this is fantastic. How do you know when the uh, oysters are done, my man? I um, know you've got an expert uh, eye right there. Yeah, typically, um, nice and brown. And once again, we use, always, use yeah. study, always use fresh grease. Um, nice and brown, um, completely. Fresh grease, fresh that's grease. key, that's right? Key. That's key. key. Um, once again, a lot of times you can tell the grease by, by, by the darkness of it or either the flavor of it. Just serve this bad or, boy Or the up. smell of it a lot of the times as well. You can, really, yeah, you can smell yeah, when you, it's done? Yeah, you can, a lot of times you go to certain places and you smell, if it smells kind of funny, that means the um, grease is not quite right. Is that so? Yes. You just know. It's, it's yeah, just yeah, one of those it's things. It's one of those things that if you've been doing it long enough, you just know. Listen to your nose. Yes. Yeah, it's the All same right. thing when we talk about fish and a lot of other beef from seafoods and stuff, too. Oh, look at that bad I'm just boy. I'm going to plate this here. I know, they're, I know they're kind of hot, but I'm going to dive in. And like I said, normally we just do a breader with it, but this one right here wants to get with the egg and then the um, egg wash and the oh. milk. It just gives us a totally different taste profile and nice and crispy and crunchy. Oh, good. We're going to plate this. And as you heard, Big Herm say, we're going to put this on, on uh, by about 2 o'clock this afternoon if you'd like to follow along Big Herm's uh, recipes. WTBR.com slash VTM is where you can go to find a link. For more information, Big Herm, always a pleasure, man. My pleasure. Thank mm -mm. you.